Welcome to Ita Gaming. Now here is another played lately video, a series that I do on my channel. I have a playlist with videos in this style. I just rant about the games that I've been playing lately. No script today. If you are new to my channel, feel free to subscribe. Leave a comment down below with what you have been playing lately also. I wanna know. Now Nintendo bags all of sent over Endless Ocean Luminous. My quick first impressions of this game is that it is interesting. Now I have been playing it maybe five hours. It doesn't take long until you feel like you have seen most of the game, I feel like. It's a unique game. I've never played any specifically ocean exploration games like this before. I know there was a Wii game called Endless Ocean. You play as a diver, you're diving down on randomly generated maps and you can explore these maps, dive up and down, scan a lot of fish. Now you have a collection screen of all the fishes that fishes? Plural of fish is still fish, isn't it? You have a collection screen of all the fish that you have scanned. That list is so long, so there are plenty of fish to scan, definitely. Some maps were more interesting than others, like I found some sunken ships, some sunken ruins. Those were kind of the highlights of the game, I feel like. It's a very chill game. It's for the especially interested. I don't think that this game is something that everyone will enjoy. I can already say that I think this is a pick up on sale game. If you are really interested in marine life and the ocean in general and the ocean doesn't creep you out, you're swimming kind of slowly, you can collect a lot of outfit stuff and expressions because there's also multiplayer. But it's a game that's overall uh, lacking in the fun factor. There, I said it. It's interesting. I had a medium fun time with the game. The story is bad, I heard, and so far it hasn't captivated me either. I watched some other reviews and they were saying that and I felt I was very much agreeing with one specific review. I will link that down below. But he said it. It's kind of difficult to even review it properly because it's, it's an exploration game down in the ocean and you're scanning fish and that is not for everyone. Now another game that I am playing right now is the newest Neptunia game, Neptunia Game Maker Revolution or R Evolution, I want to say Revolution. New Neptunia game, this time around you are playing as older Neptune and you are together with three failure consoles. If you remember me talking about the Neptunia series before, all of the characters in the universe are representing some in real life game console. So this time around you meet the Jaguar. What was it? Apple Pippin, that's the character, and the 3DO, like actual old consoles and they are the failure makers that Neptune is now helping out to get shares again, get fans again in this fictional land and it's uh, kind of cute. I am playing Neptunia games mainly for the story. I think that is the correct mindset with going into Neptunia games. They are games that doesn't have like the biggest budget in the world. We're talking ID Factory Compile Heart. And I am a fan of ID Factory and Compile Heart. I've been playing almost all of their games, but they are not on par with AAA titles when it comes to quality or the performance or the graphics or anything, but they have something in common, most of the ID Factory games, and that is that the story is where it is at. <laughs> I am already familiar with Neptune and all of the other uh, established characters in the Neptunia franchise. So I mean, I am having a good time just seeing them again and I'm treating the Neptunia games, like I said, like story games. Because the gameplay is okay at best, I think it's okay. Now performance is not the best, but still I'm a fan of Neptunia. <laughs> gameplay wise, you have dungeons, you have this map and you go into these dungeons and you can 100% explore the dungeons, that's kind of fun. And you have some side quests, like defeat a certain amount of enemies. And you have a motorbike this time around, which um, is not working as I think it wanted to work. Like the layouts of the levels and the dungeons, they are not really uh, designed for that. Crashing into walls all the time. Anyways, they are experimenting a lot, uh, as they do when it comes to ID Factory Compile Heart. I think it's fun to see Neptune again and all of the old characters again and the new ones. So that's a heads up, new Neptunia game. 
Which actually brings me to actually replaying now Neptunia Sisters versus Sisters. I was sent this day one edition from the publisher. Thank you. And I dug up my old Nintendo Switch Lite. So I'm playing this on the light in bed and that's my evening game right now, my bed gaming game. And I gotta say that I played Neptunia Sisters vs Sisters on the PS5 and surprisingly enough it runs really good on the Switch. I didn't think that would happen, but it actually does. You are running smoothly through the dungeons, looks good on the light. That surprised me. So I'm having fun with uh, some Neptunia games lately. And I guess I could say that those games are also not for absolutely everyone. You kind of need to know what you're getting yourself into, but still they have their charm. Now I have also been checking out Sandland on the PS5 and I'm not far into the game. First impression is that this is a game for kids and I can kind of feel that. It's an open world sandbox, pun intended, sand game, Sandland, where you are in this desert and the characters that you are following in the story, they're stealing water because water is difficult to come across in the desert apparently and there's a water shortage. Some of the gameplay mechanics are sneak missions, some are sections where you're in this tank shooting stuff, also there is actually combat going on. There are collectibles, there are side quests, and the map is fairly huge, I want to say. Sandland is a game that I will be playing more, I think. The character designs are made by the guy that made the Dragon Quest characters, which passed away fairly recently. And I feel like Sandland has not been talked a lot about, so maybe that is something that you could check a tiny bit out and see if it is for you. I know a few people in my life that would actually like this game. So check Sandland out, open world action RPG. Now I have a tiny recommendation for an indie title actually on the Switch. I don't really play a lot of indie titles, but this one was on sale, it cost almost nothing and it's so small and it's actually cute, I don't know. I found it by accident and it is called Life Bubble. It's a small game, okay, it's an indie game on the Switch and it's kind of a little time sink because I've been playing it more than I intended to play it already, I can say that. Now you're playing this little character that are collecting resources Sources to build the life bubble. You cannot go outside of the bubble. So it's really simple to understand, right? Collecting certain materials, putting them into these uh, light making dots. And it's just a fun little addictive time. That's a tiny recommendation. Uh, surprised me. Life bubble on the Nintendo Switch recently dropped. Funny little title. Now I am ending the video with saying that my next videos will contain Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. Also, I am starting the Avatars game on PS5. I was influenced by a follower called Robert on Twitter. He was saying that this game is so good and so underrated. So I'm starting that one now. Uh, we'll talk more about that in another video. Now that was all for this video. If you want to join a fun time, we have a Discord channel, link down below. It's where we talk talk about games and share memes. A whole community waiting for you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later.